About every four years, athletes from every country in the world compete to push the boundaries of what is possible. That is, of course, the Olympics. And that is taking place this year in Paris. And normally a host nation uses the opportunity to actually show off their country, make sure it looks good, right? You know, we did that in 2012. We actually kind of made Britain look good, yeah. particularly London. And it actually went quite well. And uh, there is a bit of an issue because the Olympics, as I said, are being held in Paris. Yeah. How do you um, make that look good? I can't go to it. No? No, I don't speak Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, outrageous. And, and as pretty much any reasonable person could have predicted, it's gone horribly wrong for France. And uh, instead, it's pushed the boundaries of how much it can embarrass the French nation, which, you know, there have been many attempts. And this seems to uh, do quite well. Although there is a small consolation if you're French and you're watching this, that we do know that you probably don't like Parisians just as much as we do, right? So yeah. we'll give you a little bit of a sort of caveat there. But they elected a new government. Isn't that supposed to be efficient and productive? What you mean? And on the, top of things? The, the socialist, openly Marxist um, political party that won despite not winning the popular vote, yes. I wanted We'll you be to getting on to that, don't yes. worry. But... Um, here is the lighting of the torch, and uh, here we have uh, a man and what I can only say, a, queen? Uh, a demon, I would say, yeah. that, this, uh, this, this woman. The communists have been in charge for five minutes, mm -hmm. and this is what they're doing. An agent of Satan is, is helping light the torch. Amazing. I, I mean, this, this helps your country look good, doesn't what, it? What an embarrassment. Mm -hmm. God. <laughs> the, the, the prophecy of this segment has already been fulfilled. Like, We're not already, even started. Yeah, yet, I'm no. already embarrassed for France that this mm -hmm. is how they've done it. Okay. Speaking of embarrassment, they've uh, had to resort to some unusual things. This is unprecedented. So, armored vehicles, night vision binoculars, Qatar lends equipment to the French police for <laughs> Olympics. So, they're having to appeal to the Islamic nation of Qatar to help them with policing. And I have a little theory here. Go on. One, that there's, there's a mutual benefit here, sort of in a more practical sense, that Qatar gets to show off its military whilst, uh, you know, on the international stage, stealing a bit of the glory of the Olympic spotlight, as well as France gets a little bit of money on the side for this, this benefit, as well as France also gets the, the sort of get out of jail for free card of, hey, we've got Muslims policing this. So it's not racism from the French if we do things to police our, our Muslim communities because we have Muslim security. Do you think there's a kind of hierarchy in the Muslim world where the oil-rich, unbelievably prosperous, bountiful, well-educated Qataris look down on the sort of North Africans who have moved to France? I would not be surprised in the slightest. I wouldn't be surprised either. Because everyone knows the sort of infighting in the Islamic world oh, yeah. is not exactly minuscule, is it? Yeah, there's lo lots of ethnic jostling for prestige. And so I just find it interesting that it's Qataris mm -hmm. doing it rather than, I mean, just straight it, anyway. It is an admission of weakness. It is, yes. Oh, yeah. And you can see they've got their, their vehicles there, very obvious vehicles that are not French. Oh, I don't know why that's zooming in. Here we go. Um, there they are arriving, yeah. some forces, and they've done some PR shots, which just looks embarrassing for France. It's like they can't even police their own um, well, events. They, they can't. They... <laughs> well, we'll That's... see that actually it's still not enough. <laughs> yeah. So, as I suggested... Sorry, just go back a second. Sure. Brigadier General Nawaf Majid Al-Ali, commander of the Qatari Security Forces, to secure Paris Olympics. I mean, that, that sentence... Imagine just... Saying that 200 years ago, <laughs> just imagine Napoleon being like, we're going to do what? Why Why would we have Arabs? Yeah, France known for at one point in history having the greatest army oh, yeah. on earth. The greatest land power on earth has been reduced to, please Qataris, come and police the Muslim immigrants to our country. I, mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet that there will be much better policing no. Oh, I'm not saying yeah. that the Qataris are going to be bad at policing at all. They're not going to be soft, that's for Well, again, sure. if, if, if there is this kind of like hierarchy of um, uh, different groups in the Arab world, well, yeah, they might be like, no, we look down on you. you know, they might be quite contemptuous of the sort of mm -hmm. Moroccans or Algerians. I don't know, you know. 
I've also heard that in some of these places, you people just don't contemplate stealing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll leave that for but a anyway, little time. Um, there is more on. on order in Arabia. That's true. Moving on. Um, there has been monetary exchanges leading up to this. And uh, Qatar true. has pledged 10 billion euros. So to, they've paid for the privilege. It seems like there's something going on. Because I would have expected the French having to pay the Qataris to do this. Well, they're, they're showcasing it. It's sort of, sort of a show right. of okay. strength for Qatar, isn't it? That they okay. have this yeah. prestige. Okay. And there's been a large investment leading up to this. This was within the sort of purview of when they were planning for the Olympics. Right. And so it seems related that the security comes along with investment in the country as well. And obviously, this is very embarrassing. And of course, there is also an unprecedented level of security at this Olympics, more so than any other. So there are 45 police, 10,000 soldiers, 2,000 private security agents, and there'll be snipers on rooftops <laughs> and drones watching from the air. God, it's, diversity is such a strength, isn't it? I know, it's wonderful, isn't it? So before the Olympics even started, it already wasn't looking good for France because of this. So there was a man who stabbed a French soldier ahead of the Olympics. And this, this man who stabbed the soldier was taken to a psychiatric hospital. This is uh, harkening back to Stelios' segment from yesterday about how these, these knives just seem to have all of these psychiatric problems. Then Potential not by people. mental illness. But, it, but it, 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 does, it does mirror very closely what happened in England just a couple of days ago. It did, yeah. It's, it's almost like but there also, are deliberate attacks on our military personnel in the West. But the the treatment of these people of be, as being um, somehow they have somehow psychiatric problems mm -hmm. and not authentically terrorists and knowing knowing what they're going to do and deliberately you can, do it. You can guess where this uh, gentleman with this psychiatric problem is from. Uh, I'm going to guess Algeria. Nope. Morocco. Nope. Right continent. I don't know. I think south of the Sahara. Well, I mean, there's a there's, there's a big continent. It is, yeah. So I'm not making this up. 40-year-old Christian Ngondo, who was born in the Congo. Um, so, uh, yeah. But they, what they're saying is just, these people are congenitally mentally ill. And this, this, I, I, this is actually a real problem that the West has, is to try and make cultural differences a therapeutic problem, to bring them in line with the way that we view the world and not understanding that they can have an authentic belief system that lies outside of the sort of Western materialist paradigm under which they take what are to them rational actions. We should be punishing this person as a criminal, not treating him as someone who is mentally deficient. 100% agree, yeah. But it's not just this. There was also, while I was preparing this segment, another attack um, which wounded a police officer in Paris uh, from a just a knifeman. We don't know any details of who they were yet. But one can only guess, based on prior evidence, about uh, the background of this supposed I'm gentleman. I'm sure his name was Jacques. Yeah. He had a nice French name, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, sort of turning to even darker things here, um, Australian woman on holiday in Paris raped by five African-type individuals. And uh, she actually had to flee to a kebab <coughs> shop where um, one of the attackers, the one of the Africans, um, Followed her in there, and while she was sat there trying to seek refuge, he came over and like patted her on the back. Jesus! And eventually, the, the kebab shop owners or, said, "Is that the guy?" And they basically chased him off. Well, I mean, good, but mm -hmm. I, that, God, that what's what's his name? He went to Africa and was interviewing those guys about rape, mm. and they were just like, "Well, you know, I don't want to catch a disease. I don't want to get pregnant." It's like, yeah, but what about her? It's like they don't talk about them like they have any feelings whatsoever about any consideration Absolutely. for the other person yeah it's just this is vile yeah well it seems to be part of a running trend because um 77 of rape cases on the paris streets are committed by foreigners in 2023 and i imagine that's probably only going up not down in 2024 yeah so you've invited these people into your country they're doing this to not only the natives but also the tourists as well and um it's got to such a point that um, some French women are actually creating videos for tourists instructing them about how to be safe in Paris because it's not safe. And she's saying, okay, look, lots of these sexual ass assaults are happening to people in Paris, women, um, and they're committed by foreigners and you need to be careful. But she's basically saying, yeah. this is the type of person you need to watch out for. Here are some situations where um, these sorts of things happen. And the fact that this is even necessary in the first place, that you have to warn 
foreign tourists that listen just because you're a tourist doesn't mean you won't be targeted yeah um it's horrifying this shouldn't happen in a european country and it never used to be necessary it was only until recently until we put, imported the third world that we started getting this sort of thing so i imagine the french left are going to point to this being responsible that there are NGOs claiming that the French police are cracking down on prostitutes ahead of the 2024 Olympic Games. Obviously, having lots of prostitutes about doesn't make your city look good. What is is this the 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 sex criminal version of if only they had more play parks and youth centres? It is, I think. If only there were more prostitutes in Paris, then the migrants <laughs> wouldn't have Just to rape people. God almighty. Okay. I'm calling it now. They're going to come out and say this 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 series of of assaults is because of this and and not because of the culture that they brought over. So some of the football matches um, for the Olympics started early. I, I think they always do this because there are a lot of rounds to get through a lot of countries. Right. And so there were actually some matches going on before the opening ceremony. And there was this one, um, Argentina versus Morocco. And lots of the Moroccan fans ran onto the pitch and started throwing firecrackers at the Argentinians. And although, you know, as a Brit, I'm not the biggest fan of Argentinians. And, you know, I still don't think that this is a uh, particularly good thing to happen. And um, it seems like a failure of all of the security. You can see them there um, to keep them uh, away from the pitch because they're running on. They're disrupting the match. They're attacking the players. Yeah. I think there's a picture somewhere, there we go, of one of the, the security personnel um, dragging away a Moroccan nerd by the looks of it. <laughs> Why are these people here? I know, yeah. Why are they on the pitch? You can see a bunch of people just wandering about. So yes, even with all of the security, it's still not enough. I'm surprised they're able to get firecrackers into the stadium. Normally football matches yeah, are pretty hot on this sort of thing. And so it is a failure and perhaps more concerning is this um, basically Islamist mobs just walking around hunting for Jewish people? Um, right. Of course, these uh, are not the native French, but um, cultural enrichers. Here they are. Right. Just sort of parading around. This is probably why they have the Qataris in. In the first place, they saw this coming, right? There, there are going to be people trying to attack Israelis because of the Israel Palestine thing. Not a problem for Western countries. Well, it's not just the Israelis. They're going to be attacking Jews because of the Israel Palestine. Well, well, that too as well, yes. So that is all going on. That is why there is an increase in policing, and it doesn't look good. So when you think of Paris, you think, okay, well, maybe around the Olympic areas, you might want to stay clear of those. Things are not looking good there. There's trouble. Islamists, um, you know, violence, firecrackers, football hooligans, all of that. Rapist. So you might, <laughs> that too, yeah. So you might think, oh, well, at least Paris, you know, it looks like this. It's beautiful. It's, just, it's the city of love, isn't it? Well. That's a great photo. It is. I, I'm not entirely sure whether it's genuine or not, but this is what people imagine when they think of Paris, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it is called the city of lights for a reason, mm. because at nighttime, it, it's, it's quite beautiful. It can be, at least. But the reality is uh, there are par parades of leftists, Antifa, being led by... Um, a drag queen? A drag queen. I don't know. Maybe a, any number of degeneracies. Um, just walking around the streets of Paris, calling about uh, you know fascists not being welcome. I hope Paris. the left. I hope everyone who voted for the op the opponents of Le Pen are just so pleased with themselves they kept her out. <laughs> I mean, everything's just going so well. I know. It's it's almost God. like there was a reason that people voted for them, isn't it? Yeah. But also. You can expect things like this. Um, so this is Paris. This isn't uh, necessarily close to the Olympics, but it's still posted in July yeah. time. But it's not necessarily relevant. But one thing you can certainly notice about this is that you don't see many French people. No, it also looks like London. a slum. It does, yeah. I mean, this could have been a beautiful street. It could have been a nice place. But it's beginning to look a bit like, you know, there's parts in South Africa and Johannesburg where yeah. it once looked prosperous, yeah. but now you see rubbish all over the floor yeah. and everything's run down. It's overcrowded. Because the people just don't take care of the area. Yeah. They well, don't have to throw the rubbish on the floor. They just don't no, care. It's a choice, yeah. isn't it? And there's actually a syndrome known as Paris syndrome. Yeah. And I'm going to read a little bit about this because it's got its own Wikipedia page. And I think it's quite funny. 
Paris syndrome is a cluster of psychiatric symptoms exhibited by some individuals when visiting Paris that can be viewed as a severe form of culture shock. The syndrome is characterized by symptoms such as acute delusional um, states, hallucinations, feeling of persecution, um, uh, derealization, depersonalization, anxiety, as well as psychosomatic manifestations such as dizziness, um, tachycardia, sweating, and most notably, but also others, such as vomiting. <laughs> so going to Paris can be so unnerving, it makes you vomit. Well, look, the, the syndrome is particularly noted amongst Japanese tourists. I know, yeah. Which I is was... weird, because I guess they've got this amazing view of what Paris should be That's like exactly it. Yeah. They, it's, they've got a very romanticized view, yeah. and they turn up, and it's dirty and unclean, and we know that the Japanese love cleanliness, you know. Heaven, you know, you know, salute them for that, right? However, there was something that I, I would like to address that is being attributed to France that wasn't actually French. It is this. The, uh, the Australians on the way to France um, had their van broken into in Brussels in Belgium. So, <laughs> Welcome to Europe. Yes. Um, Brussels is hardly much better than Paris. It's not. It's no. probably worse, to be honest. It, I, I went through Belgium recently, yeah. and it was kind of everything about it was negative. Yeah. The roads were like they hadn't paved them since World War I, like there were yeah. still um, mortar shells. It rained the whole time, both there and back. And there was horrendous traffic jams. Yeah, massive degrees of criminality. Like, anyway. They did find some of their stuff at the end. Oh, but, great. Um, just as a bit of a consolation here. So the French don't feel like I'm hating on you too much. I actually quite like France. But I will hate on Belgium. Uh, I've got no problems against that. So some more stuff that happened before the ceremony even opened. There has been an arson attack on many of the train networks leading into Paris. This is purportedly a very coordinated attack that's targeted lots of different areas. And um, I'm going to read a direct quote here from the article. The state-owned railway operator said arsonists had targeted installations along the lines connecting Paris with cities such as Lille in the north, Bordeaux in the west, and Strasbourg in the east. And these will be disrupted until they're repaired, which is estimated to be at the end of the weekend. So it's going to interfere with people actually getting in to view the opening ceremony. And um, I think the rail line said, one in four trains are cancelled because Jesus. of this, which is quite a disruption when it's going to be particularly busy. Yeah. So supposedly they targeted multiple different places. So it does seem to be... Coordinated. Yeah, some sort of coordinated, organised thing that I don't think is in the, the purview of, say, Islamists, this level of coordination. Well, or at least we've not seen it in who, the West. Who knows who's done it, but uh, someone mm -hmm. has. There are suspicions that it might be... Um, well. Actually, before I get onto that, I'll just show you the situations in the train stations. It's yeah. not looking good. I bet it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's ruined lots of people's plans, yeah. obviously. But there are suspicions that it could be Russians because here we have a Russian reality TV chef who's been accused of being a spy um, who's been sent there to sabotage the Paris Olympics. But he was found out because he was talking about it while he was really drunk which sounds like satire. Average Russian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only foil to Russian spies is alcohol. <laughs> but I would be quite surprised if they relied on someone with a bit of face recognition, right? Someone who dresses like that isn't exactly subtle. He's going to stick a low out profile. Of it. Yeah, and also, you know, he's been on TV, and although I don't think many French people watch Russian reality TV... It's a strange choice. For yeah, it would he's be, above yeah. suspicion. <laughs> well, well, apparently not. Actually, yeah. Stelios. But, yeah. yeah, but because he said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But to be fair, um, apparently the French police have searched where he was staying, and they have found connections to the FSB, which is the Russian Secret yeah. Service. However, that doesn't necessarily mean he's the person behind the train attacks. He could be there for any number of reasons. He could also. I'm just... not inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt, though. No, I mean <laughs> we just don't know yet because it's going on at the minute. Mm. So. I, I might have accidentally snuck in a little meme. Um, here it is. Um, <laughs> this summarizes <laughs> the sort of sentiment I Finally think the French it. should be feeling. You <laughs> Fascism kept out, is over. You kept out the fascists, but this is what your capital looks like at the minute. You've got rats. You've got the Palestinian flag flying. You've got uh, ethnic minorities with bloodied machetes and tents everywhere. Tent markets. Well done. Flames. Bravo. Mm -hmm. Obviously... What this is referencing is the alliance between Macron, the centrists, and the left. 
to keep the far right, as they call it, not really far right. They've yeah. got socialist policies, if anything, economic policies. Um, and they pulled a bunch of candidates out in a bid to stop national rally, which is basically a sort of electoral gerrymandering, I suppose. It's not really the it's, correct word. It's more tactics. They it can, is tactics. They can do this legally. So it is legal. Um, however, it gets a result <coughs> whereby you can see here, here's the election result. So national um, rally got 37.1% of the vote, which yeah. is the highest out of any, but they had... Um, you know, the third least number of seats yeah. um, compared to people who had a lower vote share because they tactically coordinated yeah. and kept them out in specific seats. And so the solution to many of these problems was there. It was, you know, getting rid of the people from your country that were causing all the problems. However, through a coordinated effort between Macron and the supposed centrists, should read left wingers, and the even further left wingers, um, the new popular front. That hasn't happened. And therefore, what we're going to see is this problem only continue and probably more embarrassments. I'm personally predicting that there is going to be some sort of violent unrest in France because of what has been done to the country. And uh, yes, if you're there for the Olympics, be careful. And if you are French, and particularly if you're living in Paris, please be careful. Hi, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to support us, you can do so for £5 a month over on lotuses.com because, of course, we're demonetized here. And while you're doing so, you can watch some of our amazing premium shows, such as Calvin Robinson's Common Sense Crusade, in which he uses the word Mohammedan more than anyone else that I know. And uh, go and follow us over on Twitter slash X at lotuseaters underscore com.